Hi, I'm Pete Stevens from Mythic Beasts Limited. So, first up, some ancient history. That is my student room when I was at university, and neatly obscured by the building right next to it was Chris Lightfoot's student room. Chris Lightfoot was an entertaining guy who, um, amongst other things, went on and helped found my society, which basically embarrassed the UK government into actually bothering to build websites and interact with everyone in the country. Another thing he did was um, we set up a web page for ourselves and our email addresses for when we graduate called xparrot.com, which is where my email address comes from. And uh, we bought some hosting for that from a company in America, um, which turned out to be rubbish. They didn't do anything we wanted. It was terrible and it cost loads of money. So cloud in a nutshell. So. We angrily ranted one day that this was a complete and utter waste of time and money and founded a company called Mythic Beasts Limited in order to host our own website, which is possibly overkill, but there you go, that's how it goes. And our plan was Mythic Beasts Limited would be a company that would host one website, which was xparrot.com. And, okay, it's not really gone well. We're a bit bigger than that now, we've got multiple data centers, we read far too much about ISO standards and PCI DSS and VAT rules and all kinds of stuff. And we are, quite definitely, an unplanned success. But not really a catastrophe. For that, we need to skip back to Chris's student room, which you can't see on that picture. And the website we set up, also listed on there under xparrot.com, is a girl called Liz. Now, um, Liz uh, used her uh, a site on this account to build a blog about cookery, uh, which quite a lot of people read, nobody spent any money with. But she also met a guy called Eben um, in Chris's room as well. Um, and Eben was rather more ambitious. He set up a company um, that was going to make Nokia the uh, leading smartphone company and mobile gaming platform in the world. Sold it on. Possibly didn't succeed in that ambition. Um, did an MBA, a PhD, a whole bunch of other things that are, are terribly exciting. Um, and then eventually, um, as he started heading into old age, he uh, married Liz. That's the happy couple and uh, rein back his ambitions slightly from taking over the whole world to the much easier problem of fixing the youth of today. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a plan of how he was going to do this. The problem with the youth of today is they're all technically incompetent. And what they needed was programmable computers that they could program at home. So Eben built basically a little thing out of an Atmel that was a computer you could make for about $20, $25 or so, and it was rubbish. It was completely hopeless. It was you know, not as good as the computers you could get in the early 1980s, which I confidently said is not going to impress the PlayStation generation at all. You'll never sell one. Don't be an idiot. So he wasn't quite. He went and got a job with Broadcom and started designing mobile phones, um, and then realized that what you got inside a mobile phone was a little bit more exciting than the prototype he had in his house. And so when he was designing a graphics chip for a mobile phone, he accidentally stuck an arm core on the end of it that he may or may not have told them about. Um, <laughs> and this turned into a mobile phone in the United States. And then uh, when they put the order in to say, can we have a lot of chips, Evan said, could I have an extra 10,000? And bought 10,000 chips and on a whole bunch of borrowed engineer time from a bunch of other folks friends at Broadcom and in the computing industry put together the first implementation of Raspberry Pi. Little computer, costs $35, runs Linux, more importantly, plays Quake 3, which was the point. So um, Liz, at this point, then writes a blog for Raspberry Pi, which is particularly important because Eben is basically a bit illiterate when it comes to writing stuff for the public. Liz is excellent. So she puts up a blog, and nobody looks at it, pretty much. But she also sets up a Twitter account and is rude and sarcastic to as many people as she possibly can be. Um, and slowly, traffic starts building on her blog. Um, I discover this because um, I'm trying to work out why my computer is going quite so slowly. Um, and it seems to spend all of its time in an account that says Liz on it. Um, and I start looking at it, and it turns out, in order to make it easier to track what people are doing, she's got a really complicated analytics package that tells you how many people have viewed this page, how many people are looking right now, how many people might look tomorrow. And what this effectively does is it reads the entire Apache log on every page request in order to work out what the analytics should say. This isn't going to work very well. 
not even if you own the whole of Amazon and you put it in the cloud, is this going to work well? It's all going very badly wrong. So um, we chatted for a bit, and um, I spent an extremely enjoyable Christmas deleting the website. Um, so I removed plugin after plugin and took stuff out until basically the website started working again. Um, we enabled WordPress cache. This is very, very handy. What it does is it works out that it already knows what this web page is going to look like because someone else has already seen it and delivers them a cached page instead. So this goes on for a bit, um, and then it starts coming around to they've actually got some Raspberry Pis. They've sort of made them. They're in a container ship somewhere in the sea, and hopefully they're going to arrive, and it's about time that they're going to launch. Now, they were smart enough not to promise to stick sticky labels and post each one of them themselves. Instead, they managed to sign a deal with RS Components and Farnell to outsource the, the shipping of the 10,000 Raspberry Pis they've made. And there's another little term buried in the contract that says when the first 10,000 have been sold, they've got to make some more and ship them out afterwards. Um, so we come to our, our launch day. Um, and uh, we've, we've, they've spoken to RS and Farnell, and they've given us some links to their websites in order that the sale can go ahead. And because they understand how website load works really well, they said things like, we're a massive corporation. Our website's really fast. You can't possibly knock it over. And gave us links to the search page. So every time someone clicked on our launch page, it went to search Farnell for Raspberry Pi. We thought this was not possibly going to go that well, so we hit a plan, which is we replaced our website with a completely static page we could ship as fast as possible so that our website would be up. We also launched at 6 o'clock in the morning when everyone would be in bed in the hope that no one would then click on it, which would give us some time to resolve the problems as and when they started to happen, which was about 6.01. <laughs> <laughs> And from then on, things just sort of got worse as time happened. So we wanted to sell 10,000 Raspberry Pis. Job done, 6.30 in the morning. Yes, uh, and again by 7. Um, yeah, and, and it, it just kept going on from there. Because by 9 o'clock, some people have started to get to work. And people are starting to ask questions like, where is RS Components today? Why can't I buy a million transistors? And some of those people are important and have the phone numbers of important people in RS components, and they phone up and they say, I want to buy a million transistors, your website's down, what the is going on? And at that point, um, some very senior people start phoning up Evan and going, what is going on? This is all very bad. Um, and uh, yes, uh, uh, it is official that the, I think the uh, um, European head of Farnell was irked at Evan's behavior, having knocked her entire site off for the entire day. So. That evening, we went to the pub and sort of wondered what we'd done and uh, what was going to happen, because um, I think we'd sold about 100,000 Raspberry Pis in the first day. 10,000 exist in a container somewhere in the sea, the next 90,000. Hopefully, someone has a plan of how they might possibly go about making them. Maybe, perhaps. Don't know. Anyway, next day, denial of service happens. Different sort of denial of service. Raspberry Pi, at this point, is an organization with no members of staff. It's now one of the biggest computer manufacturers in the history of the UK. It's got 100,000 people who bought computers yesterday and would like to have them delivered now. And not only do they not have you know, shipping dates of tomorrow or Thursday, they don't even have an estimate of when anyone might possibly go about thinking about making it in order to possibly ship it. So their website starts filling up with lots of angry people and angry comments. And that's before you get the other set of people, because, you know, the internet is worldwide. It turns out lots of people have bought Raspberry Pis from Brazil and Argentina, and they've got questions like, your website says it costs $35, but when I add on local sales taxes and import taxes and shipping taxes, I got billed 99, can I have a refund? And we're like, we know nothing about Argentinian sales tax. Don't know anything at all. So um, our website is now falling over under the load of um, a very large number of angry people who are, are kind of grumpy and saying we're a virtual organization and it's vaporware and they can't have one and so on. Um, and uh, I get a phone call which is, I think we might need to scale things up again. Can you, you know, procure a much bigger server, make it all go, do a port on that by lunchtime? Um, <laughs> which was a hard day's work. Um, so we did that. Um, and then, again, we need to start investigating a bit more caching because we're still using WordPress and it's still rubbish and it still uses PHP. So uh, we install WordPress Supercache, which is a great piece of software. Supercache does conditional compilation. We're back to 1980s computer games here. So it works out when you request a page if it, you've already rendered it before. And if you have, not only does it ship out the cached page, it doesn't bother compiling the rest of WordPress in order that 
um, you, you can serve more pages more quickly. The advanced PHP cache is another piece of thing that says, oh, I've already compiled this piece of PHP, so we don't need to compile it again. We can use the object file we used last time. When you combine these two together, it goes really badly wrong because SuperCache says, I don't need to compile WordPress. I've got a cache copy of the page. And advanced PHP cache says, ah, oh, I'll save that. And remember that all we ever do is serve the cache copy of the page. And then we delete the cache copy because the page is updated, and we serve everyone a blank page. And the whole thing falls over and goes horribly wrong again. This happens from time to time. But eventually, we get there. We've got a nice stable platform, and basically, it's all working. And unfortunately, at that point, some people start getting hold of their Raspberry Pis, and some of these people are teenagers who are basically the pinnacles of responsibility. <laughs> um, so what the teenagers do is say, I wonder how many SIN packets it takes to knock Raspberry Pi off the internet. And the answer is, well, quite a few, but there are enough SIN packets. You can do it. It's not that hard. So um, yeah, we start uh, getting knocked over from time to time by a few denial of service attacks formed by uh, teenagers with small botnets. Um, and uh, this is very annoying. Someone steps in and says, it's OK. We've got a cloud-based denial of service protection system. Why don't you use it? And we say, great. Turn it on. Look at the stats page, stats page. And it says, did you know half of the people coming to your site are malicious? And we're like, no. Sounds a bit weird. Then my phone rings. It's, it's Liz on the phone. It's like, Pete, I am not a bot. And she hangs up. <laughs> we can't update the website anymore, literally We've blocked almost all legitimate traffic. So that didn't work so well. Um, so at that point, I get a, new, a new, <laughs> new project to do, which is can you build a denial of service prevention system by, say, lunchtime? Um, again. <laughs> so what I do is I, I think about it briefly and conclude that basically we just need to sync SYN packets. So we just drop a bunch of servers at the front end that receive connections, throw them away if they're not real, and then load balance them all back to the single host at the back end, which gives you the exact opposite plan to a normal website, which has a lot of back end servers and a small number of load balancers at the front. We've got loads of load balancers and one back end server. Um, and the problem here, of course, is because we're scattering the front ends around not only our network but other people's initially, um, we need to make sure that the front ends can get to the back end. And that means if the front ends can get to the back end, so can the kiddies. And the kiddies can knock the back end off, which means it doesn't all work. And that's where I hit upon a brilliant idea. Let's turn off IPv4 completely for the host. So our host is IPv6 only. All of the traffic inside is IPv6 only. It's really hard to deny the service something you can't route to. Um, and so basically, we ended up with Raspberry Pi running a completely pure v6 internal network. All of the internal services are v6 only. Um, everything magics back into life. It all goes fine. This is great. And um, suddenly, we're realizing that we've actually got you know, real proper levels of production v6 traffic around our network. And if we break v6, Liz phones me up and yells at me. So let's not do that. Um, so everything calms down for a bit until eventually Raspberry Pi go and update their website again and do a site refresh. We've got a new design for the site. We do a whole load of extensive testing to make sure it's all going to work fine. We know the performance. We've measured everything. And we turn it on. And obviously, everything falls over. Why does it fall over? We didn't test the 404 page. In the process of doing the move, Ben broke quite a lot of links. It goes through to our 404 page. Our 404 page does a search on our site to find the most appropriate matching page, serves that page, and knocks us over. I apologize, Farnell. We're just as stupid as you are. <laughs> Don't get everyone on the internet to link to your search page. It goes badly wrong. Top tip. So um, the next thing that follows on from that is um, coming up to Christmas, we're aware that some Raspberry Pis have been sold. And some of those people who've bought Raspberry Pis want to do things like download operating system images. So we ask questions like, how many Raspberry Pis did you sell? And we get answers like, that's commercially confidential. We can't tell you. So we did what any responsible and sensible person would do, which is cross our fingers and hope for the best. Um, that's our traffic graph. Um, so yeah, they tripled their traffic on Christmas Day at about 10 AM, which is pretty much the worst time in the world to try and buy a new link if you need one. But um, <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, we got away with that one. So that wasn't a gigantic disaster. But yeah, there were some nerves as the traffic kept rising. And I was starting to wonder who I was going to phone. Um, so yeah, that was OK. But coming into this year, um, I now have a lot of data about there's a lot of Raspberry Pis out there. There's increasingly many users on the website. The forums are getting active. 
and uh, at some point we're going to crash into our hosting infrastructure is too small, we need to build something bigger and faster. And at that point, we discovered HHVM. Hip Hop VM, it's made by Facebook to make PHP go really fast. It's brilliant. It's very, very quick. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the forums on our website. So um, if we turn Hip Hop VM on, the blog goes nice and quickly, but everyone's ability to discuss the site falls apart. So I draw out a nice plan where I say what we should do is split the site into lots of VMs and have one hosting infrastructure for the forums and one for the blog and split it all out. And this gives us a, a much more scalable platform and it's all going to be nice and sensible. It'll take a couple of weeks time to reconfigure everything and make it go. And Liz says to me, that's a great plan. What are you doing on the 2nd of February? This is at the very end of January. And I say, well, I'm going to go and sit on a beach in Cape Verde and look at some turtles fornicating. Why? What are you doing? And she says, we're launching Raspberry Pi 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so five minutes before my flight takes off, you're launching Raspberry Pi 2. So, um, yeah, the problem with really secret things is you can't tell anyone about them. So, yes, um, it turned out that that was um, quite an exciting launch. Um, some people turned up um, and uh, looked at our webpage, and it was called a global geekgasm by the register, which was probably a bit of an understatement. Um, we discovered that we had a zero different in the number of people that came to our webpage because when the main web server wasn't able to keep up, we told the load balancers to just serve out a holding page with a copy of the announcement, which was the plan, that was the idea, but we forgot to put the analytics on it. So we've only got analytics for pages we serve properly, and the other 10 and something million people that got the holding page, we've got no idea who they were, where they are, or what it went. So um, yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. And the other problem we discovered is periodically, our website would just stop and then come back again. And, and it would just kind of like grind to a halt, we'd serve the holding page for a bit, and then all the performance would come back. And it seemed to be correlated with whenever people posted comments on the blog. And we came up with a great theory, which is we thought someone would serve a comment on the blog, at which point we'd delete the cached version of the page, and while we're rebuilding from cache, it will go too slow until the cache page has been rebuilt. And then we looked carefully and said, no, it's not that. There's a little setting that says, don't do that. It doesn't work. <laughs> this is exactly what happens. We delete the cache file on the comment posting. Someone turns up and says, I'd like a copy of the page. And we go, oh, we'll rend you one of those. And someone else turns up and says, I'd like a copy of the page. And we say, oh, we'll rend you one of those. And someone else turns up and someone else turns up. And it's like, we're now rendering a lot of pages in parallel, and we're running out of capacity to do it. If you model this, which I did with a piece of code, you discover that the top line of that slide is completely wrong. This is not an order of n to the power an awful lot problem. It's worse than any polynomial performance that you can imagine. It's worse than n factorial. It is, in fact, asymptotic to a complete cliff. At about 110 requests a second, your website stops forever. It's gone. It exists no more. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was, um, that was helpful. Um, and it was particularly annoying because we thought we'd already worked around it because we knew we had all the settings and we'd even done a bunch of testing to demonstrate that we thought it worked. Unfortunately, it didn't. However, handily, yeah, the, the, the mission for the day was to serve the holding page to everybody, which is what we did, so that's okay. And then afterwards, the load subsided and everyone got to shout and complain at us again like they normally do and troll quite a lot. So after that, we've now gone back and done the VM project, which we've done since February. So now Raspberry Pi split into lots and lots of VMs. Um, that, are, that are running the main website, everything's split out. We've got Hip Hop VM running the main blog, so it goes five times faster. It's had a massive hardware upgrade, so it's actually now about 75 times quicker than it was just before the launch. God, I wish I'd done that in January. But anyway, it's now all up, and we've got much more um, separation between the bits and pieces. And we also solved a bunch of other technical debt that we didn't know we had, like a couple of security issues that were sat there in the site we hadn't noticed. One of the things we hadn't realized is one of the things they'd put on the main web server was the little thing that generates MPEG-2 decryption keys for people who've bought licenses. And one of the other things they'd put on the website was the ability for one Raspberry Pi that's out in the field in Devon to upload some photographs for the time-lapse photography. And because some people aren't very good with their permissions, if you steal the Raspberry Pi, you can go and nick an MPEG-2 license key generator. I know some people that would be upset <laughs> about that. <laughs> Um, so, but that's all, that's all now solved, and that's all split out into lots of VMs. And again, we follow the previous plan, which is all of those VMs are v6 only. So there isn't a single host on the back-end network that actually has v4 connectivity, apart from the one that accepts stuff being FTP'd in. 
Um, and obviously the load balancers at the front have v4 connectivity because they talk to the world but otherwise the whole of the back end is, is v6 completely there's no v4 um, what follows on from that is hip hop vm is now there and running it's brilliant nice and fast but it has an uptime of 10 minutes which is unhelpful uh, fortunately we put multiple VMs on for serving the web, so the load balancer shares them out and people didn't tend to notice. Um, you fiddle with the settings a lot, and um, now it's gone up time of a couple of days, which is better, but still not, for example, good. But it, it, it's getting there, and we're hoping it will get there. And yeah, it just sits in the knit and gets restarted, and, and everything seems to work. And until now, people don't appear to have noticed, but obviously, you're going to comment on the forums and you know make things tricky and difficult again. Um, and uh, that's where we are now, and we don't quite know what's going to happen next, but you know, at some point we think you know, Raspberry Pi 3 or something stupid is going to happen, and we're going to deal with the fact that we've you know, accidentally become the largest computer manufacturer in the history of the UK. I think we're in second place at the moment, but you know, Sinclair is on the list. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so from that, you can follow Raspberry Pi on Twitter, and you can follow Mythic Beasts on Twitter, and you can also see the Mythic Beast blog, which contains, you know, boring service announcements about things we actually do, and, you know, other times when I get bored and build a castle out of TU servers and knock it down with a trebuchet made out of rat rails. Um, uh, other than that, you can ask me some questions, and if you don't ask any questions, we can go to the pub and drink beer. Um, I will be in the pub, you can ask me questions there as well, and I'll also be in the Cambridge Beer Festival for much longer, where you can ask more in-depth questions that need more than one beer. But anyway, anyone have any questions? Can I buy you a beer? <laughs> yes! <laughs> so I think that was Dave was first off. <laughs> Dave Freeman from Clarinet. Um, thanks for the presentation. It was uh, quite entertaining. I, I just wonder, you were talking, you were describing issues concerning scale and denial of service attacks and all the things that usually make people go running to content delivery networks. I'm interested to see that you chose not to do that and you chose to implement it all yourself. I'm assuming there was money involved being that you, you know, discussed procuring servers. Um, part of it was um, uh, time scale. So, you know, some of it was um, we're being denial of service right now. What can we do in the next half an hour that will make the problem go away? I've delivered a, a small set of load balancers in half an hour. The problem has gone away. doesn't recur. Okay, problem kind of solved. Didn't cost anything. Job done. Um, I mean, it, it's not so bad for us because we're being denial of service by relatively small people who aren't trying that hard. You know, we're, we're seeing, you know, four or five gigabits of SIN traffic or thereabouts. It's nothing terribly excited or clever. I mean, if the kids were actually clever, we wouldn't need Raspberry Pi in the first place. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> that was my question, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Peter. No problem.